Hi everyone. In this lesson, we'll learn how to find out what language the player is using, and how to change your game's language to the appropriate one. We've already seen that the developer console allows us to provide a game description in different languages, but we need all the in-game buttons, menus, and messages to display in the user's native language as well. Let's learn how to do this. The game currently has several text items that we originally wrote in English these buttons, for example. Our goal is to have them automatically translated into the language matching the one that the user has selected in their Yandex Games interface. The first order of business is opening Start menu. This is where we need to get the intel from the Yandex SDK on what language is being used. Create an empty object and call it language. Create a script with the same name. Drag the script on the object. Now, let's make the object a singleton to make it easier to access. Static instance. Under awake, make it a singleton and store it in this variable. This is convenient because going forward finding out the language is going to be just a matter of locating this object within the scene and accessing it. We also have don't destroy on load here. This object first appears in the starting scene and persists across all levels, never getting destroyed. It's going to store the language that's currently selected. I'll create a public string here. And I'll call it current language. This string will contain R, U, or N, whichever is selected. We also need a method that'll call the language get function from the SDK. Let's add an external method via DLL import. Import the namespace. Here, that's the method, and this is its name. It returns a string. That's the type of the return value. We'll go to JSLIB and write what exactly this method does. Here's how we're going to actually use it. We need to get the current language. Down here, declare current language equals get lang, and that's it. It'll get past the string and store it in this variable. For the sake of convenience, to facilitate testing and see what's happening, let's run an on-screen text that'll show the current language. This is strictly for testing purposes, and the final game will hide it. Go text mesh pro UGUI and call it, say, language text. Down here, write language text dot text equals current language. Great. Let's save and put the text into the inspector. Inside the language object, I'll create a new canvas. Under UI, go to Canvas. Inside the canvas, create Text Mesh Pro. I'll identify it to avoid confusion. Let's put in something like RU. I'll position it in the top left corner. We don't see it in the game view because canvases are displayed according to the sort order. Just place it above the gray background, like this. Here, RU. I'll also make it black so that it's clearly visible against the light background. Let's initialize this text. Put in something like No, for example. There's none yet, but when it's selected, this text will change, and that'll tell us that everything is working correctly, and the SDK function has been called. Drag this text here. The current language is empty now, but it'll populate later. Let's go to the JSLB file where we need to input the getLang function. Switch to JSLIB and create a new function. That's its name. Cologne, function, round brackets, and curly brackets. Here, the method must return a value. Previously, we used these DLL import methods, but they were of type void, meaning they execute without returning anything. Here, we do need it to return a result. So let's create a return statement. It'll return a string with the language. Let's now go into the Yandex documentation to see exactly how it's done. You need the environment variables section. Here they are. If you scroll down a bit, you'll see it mentions the environment object, which contains different environment variables. Environment, 
here means certain things facilitating the game's operation. The environment object features different parameters and structures. Here we have the I18N structure, which has the lang parameter. How exactly do we use it? There's a small example here. YSDK.environment.payload. This is how we access the environment object. Put it here. Next, call the I18N structure, followed by its parameter lang. This is the string with the language we need. We're almost done here. However, there's a slight caveat. We'll need to flesh out and modify this code to where it looks like this. You can't just go ahead and send a string from JavaScript to C-sharp. There are several steps in between. I actually based this code on the one provided in the Unity documentation. Here, interaction with browser scripting. It describes how interfacing between JavaScript and c -sharp works when it comes to calls, access, and so on. There are some sample functions, including this one. This one returns a string. This is kind of intricate. You need to declare a variable, allocate some memory, and then use string to UTF-8 to convert a JavaScript string to a c -sharp one. Just copy-paste it all because the logic is the same. We call the language get method, run these modifications, and return it to C sharp. And now we're done with the main task. Now we write exactly how we're going to use these tools. After all that, we'll have, for example, N here for English. If we're working with Russian, then it'll be RU, Turkish something like TR. But how do we use the value in this field to change the word on this button? Create a new script and call it, say, international text. I'll then attach this script to each object that needs to be in a certain language. In other words, to each text item. For instance, here we have a button that says go. For this text object, not the button object, we add a new component, international text. Let's go inside the script and edit it. I prepared this code. Be sure to import the text mesh pro namespace. To be honest, this isn't the best implementation of game localization. We're just doing this to understand how it all works. We fetch the language and use it. The specifics of this script heavily depend on the game the number of texts it has, and the way you go about them. This is just a basic implementation. So, we access the language singleton and call current language. If it returns English, we take the text mesh pro component from this object. Here you can see our script attached to an object with text mesh pro. We take this component, and change its text to the one in this string. If the language is Russian, the text is taken from this string. What if it's either Russian nor English? Probably best to go with English. It's an international language. Following the same pattern, you can add your own strings here with any other language that the game supports, and then input them into this conditional statement. Saving the script. Let's fill in these fields the go button. I'll call it go in English and in Russian. Poekali. Now we attach this script to all objects that contain text. I'm going to enter a level. We have the play button here. Go inside. Select text mesh pro. Add the international text component and supply the actual text play in English and igrat in Russian and so on. Let's also do hello. Hello in English and privet in Russian. That's it. This object is a prefab, so we first need to apply changes. Make sure everything's attached. Yes, there's our text. Click play. Some errors are logged in the console. Because we're not running the game in a browser. Everything works.
Let's build and see how it looks on Yandex Games. Upload the file, and let's try it. Great. You can see the games in Russian. In the top left corner, are you? Click Poekali. And there we go. Privet Igrat. Everything's as it should be. By the way, here's a little life hack. You can do this for other languages as well. If in the draft settings I go to the English tab and click this link, it'll run the English version. We're only interested in the language at the moment. You can see it's in English. Go. And everything else is in English too. By the way, there's a reference for the language codes. It's an ISO standard ISO 639 to 1. You can look it up on Wikipedia. Here are the codes for each language. You've learned how to use the I18N structure to find out in what language the Yandex Games interface is displayed on the user's device. The most popular languages on the platform are Russian, English, and Turkish. It'd be a good idea to localize the game into at least those three.